Hi, I'm Josh, DevRel at Code Intelligence, and I'm going to explain how fuzz testing works without using any code. Imagine fuzzing a piece of software like a function. We're going to represent this function as a service cashier at a fast food hamburger restaurant. Hi, welcome to Burger Mart. Can I take your order? Yes, I would like one hamburger, please. Okay, here you go. One hamburger. In the previous example, our fast food worker is a function and the function takes inputs, which is an order and produces outputs, which is the result of an order. So if you order one hamburger as an input, the output will be one hamburger, presumably. So what other kinds of tests can we do? Well, we can also have negative tests where we pass in invalid inputs, expecting there to get expected errors or some kind of output that reflects the invalid nature. Welcome to Burger Mart. Can I take your order? Yes, I would like one pizza, please. I'm sorry, we don't serve pizzas, so I'm not gonna give you anything. In addition to invalid test cases, we can also talk about fuzzy test cases. These are semi-valid or semi-invalid inputs that might produce surprising results. Let's see what that might look like. Hi, can I have one of a little burger? I'm sorry, what was your order? I'll have one little burger, please. Uh, okay, here's one hamburger. So based on our fuzzy input, we were able to get a hamburger as output, even though we didn't exactly ask for a hamburger as input in our order. This is the way fuzz testing works. If you pass in inputs that are invalid or fuzzy, you might be able to generate unexpected or buggy results that you might not know how to find. For more information, check out CodeIntelligence.com and our blog.